Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bone Zone. So, how do we mic up a tuba? That was my dog. There's all kinds of tubas out there. There's ones like this, which is ancient. There are sousaphones, there's marching band tubas, there's regular tubas, there's all kinds of tubas. But how do you mic them up? This is a question I had a couple of months ago and couldn't find the answer. Nobody seems to write. Daisy! <laughs> Anyways, I did a little bit of research. I uh, I couldn't find anything. Nobody has a video. Nobody writes how to mic up a tuba the best way. So we're going to do a little experimenting today. Not all microphone positions are going to work the same for different situations. For example, if you're a classical musician, you're going to record differently than if you're a looper like myself. If you're kind of walking around or if you're marching, which you wouldn't record while marching. But if you did want to, you would do it differently. So we're going to look at a couple of different ways that I've figured out. Is this the most professional way to position a microphone? Yeah, because there's no written rules, so we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Today we're gonna be using this. This is the Shure SM57 instrument microphone. It's an extremely popular microphone. It's invincible. Every brass musician should have one of these. It sounds fantastic, and that's what I use uh, usually for tuba. It's only a hundred dollars, and I really like it. So we're gonna use this for every test except for my clip-on microphone because that's a little different. And I'm sure you can see all of my sweat. All right, let's do some recording. So we're going to try three different methods of miking a tuba in this video. Microphone in the bell, microphone outside of the bell, and a clip-on microphone. I'm going to be doing a little bit of post-mixing in this video because you need to put compression on a tuba when you record it because the volume spikes are just ridiculous. You're talking extremely loud to extremely soft. So, But that's really all I'm going to do. Maybe I'll add a tiny bit of reverb, but probably not. And uh, one more little thing. I'm not really a tuba player. I'm a trombone player, but I play tuba for my looping videos and I get by. So this is also not the best tuba in the world, but it works. You know, it's what I got. You likely have something vastly, vastly different. So first, we're gonna be looking at just a basic microphone on a microphone stand. And I'm gonna elevate the microphone just a little bit past the tuba, try to find a good spot for it. I don't usually record like this, but I know this is one good way to record. I don't record like this because I move around a lot. But if you're like a very posh classical musician, you might wanna do something like this or if you're just sitting down and you wanna record. So, we're just gonna put the microphone in facing downwards or whichever way your tuba faces. I have a, a vintage recording bell tuba. I don't really know a lot about it, but I, I actually think it's cool and I like it. It's really, really old but it actually records kind of more forward than uh, some tubas. Some tubas, the sound goes up, some it goes forward. Mine kind of goes at a, an angle. Ooh, that actually works out well for this video that's re designed for recording. How about that? The other good thing about the Shure SM57 is there's no phantom power required. And if you're new to recording, don't worry about that. Because if you get a microphone like this, you just plug in and play. So let's check it out. Especially if you're taking video, you want to get comfortable first and then position the microphone. This type of microphone is also very directional. So you, you want to point it where the sound is coming out. Which is kind of common sense, but you don't want to like have it sideways. Just a quick little tip there. Another quick tip about positioning. The closer you get, the less room reverb you're going to get. If you're recording like this, you don't want it too close. You don't want it too far. But feel free to experiment. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so that was an elevated microphone on a microphone stand. <laughs> microphone on a microphone stand. So the next method I'm going to try is duct taping the microphone inside the tuba. Believe it or not, this is a pretty common method of miking tubas, especially sousaphones for live concerts. I've seen it a couple of times. And what's the name of the brass band? Hot 8? No. Bump. Uh, Youngblood. I believe the one instance I've seen it is Youngblood Brass Band, their tuba player, and they get a big fat bassy sound out of it. And I'm pretty sure he just like drops the microphone inside the tuba. I have modified it a little bit. I bring it up the bell. So I'm getting a little bit of natural tone and a little bit of the bass. And that's my preferred method for how I use it. So let's try that out. I'm actually gonna wrap it in a sock because basically I've been duct taping it directly to the tuba, but even when you do that, you can hear it. So I figured the vibration of the bell is probably not good for the overall quality of the sound. So I'm gonna wrap it in a sock and then tape it to the tuba because I think that'll reduce some of the vibrations. I don't think it'll mess up the tone. I think it can only probably help. I haven't done this yet trying to get a little tape there at the top too so it doesn't slip out of the sock but if it does you know I can always adjust my methods okay so now I'm gonna put this in the tuba I know it looks weird now for my tuba I try to put it in just near the top because any lower which I've seen some people do I feel like it's almost pure bass sound and no natural sound. That's why I put it kind of towards the top because it's, it's plenty loud, believe me. But that's, that's just kind of how I do it. So let's try that out. Now I do have this plan of possibly forging some kind of brass uh, microphone holder that I could solder to the tuba and then I can just essentially make a microphone holder for the tuba. And I also had an idea of getting like a clip and like a strong bendy stick sort of deal so it can suspend the microphone i think that would be a cool idea but you know maybe some other time okay so that looks <laughs> that looks kind of silly but like i said the uh the pros do it it's what the pros do now i will say when you have the gain that high on the microphone you got to turn the gain down a little bit because it's now too loud <laughs> I have the gain all the way down, so I might have to move the microphone back a little bit. Now I'm going to use a clip on microphone. I hope that worked well though because I want to use it. Uh, I haven't tried the suck thing before. Let's get my trusty old clip on microphone that I purchased at a discount price from the Ringling Brothers Circus. Okay, so this is my DPA clip-on microphone, which is a very nice microphone, but so it's maybe gonna sound better, maybe sound worse. I honestly haven't done a comparison. All I know though is I use this for my trombone, and I don't think it's gonna work too well on a tuba because the tuba sound is so directional, and this is, I mean, I'll, I'll show you, but it's 
not gonna really make where most of the sound is coming out. So it's looking like my best bet for getting most of the sound is gonna be putting it up here and pointing it downwards. I mean, you could probably come up with a rig to get the microphone a little bit closer, but we'll, we'll see how this sounds. It might sound a little more natural. The only reason I don't do this is because it's a nice microphone. I use it for my trombone. So let's see how this sounds. Oh, and I will need a phantom power for this. That is one of the differences with these clip-on microphones. You usually need phantom power. I don't know if I have the button on. There's one stupid thing about these skinny, skinny little cables. They get twisted up and stuff, and it can't figure out how to get it back out. I actually, I actually have a funny story about that. I was, I was playing in a full arena of people in the circus, and that little, the little wire right there got, I think, under my foot, and it was in the middle of the tiger show. <laughs> And, and I brought up my trombone to play a part and it snapped at the wire. And when a phantom power wire snaps, that electrical signal goes through the entire sound system of the arena and it made a giant explosion sound. <laughs> and the whole entire arena was like, Whoa, what the heck was that? And the Tigers also did that too. So that didn't that didn't go over too well. But we're talking thousands of people <laughs> were, were not very happy in that moment. All because of me. So, oops. All right, let's check this out. Now I'm going to play two or three songs that I'm going to have to remember so I can do side-by-side -side comparisons. Okay, I'm going to do When the Saints Go Marching In, that one song by that one brass band, and an oompa. <laughs> So one quick bit about microphones that you want to buy for recording a tuba. Like I said, I recommend the Shure SM57. This is a dynamic microphone specifically designed for instruments. There's a lot of different microphone styles out there. For example, this is also a dynamic microphone. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. But when you're doing your research, there's condenser microphones, there's dynamic microphones, there's microphones that need phantom power, no phantom power. Just kind of do your research and look for which ones say they're tailored toward instruments because the companies do that, let them do the tough work. And I don't know if there's reviews out there, but if it says instrument microphone, there's a good bet it's gonna sound pretty good for what you need. Even clip-on microphones, there's one that say instrument. 
clip-on microphones. Being an instrument microphone doesn't add to the cost. It's just a style of microphone that the companies tailor towards instruments. And yeah, this, this one right here, which is one of the best-selling, actually probably the best-selling microphone out there, is $100. At least last time I checked, it's $100. With inflation now, it's probably like $2 million. <laughs> No, I think um, I think it's a hundred dollars. I'll put a link in the description below. Highly recommend this microphone. But there's a lot of them out there, so you know, do some shopping around, I guess. All right, that was the test of the microphone. My battery's almost out. I gotta go. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Like, subscribe, do all the usual crap, and goodbye. My microphone's gonna die.